have seen the structures of male reproductive as well as the female reproductive uh, systems and now we'll be talking about the process of copulation then fertilization and lastly cocoon formation so that the young worms the young earthworms they hatch from that cocoon so that would complete the reproduction part that means the young ones would be produced so what exactly happens during copulation two worms they come closer to each other but the alignment of these two worms in it should be in a particular manner we'll draw two worms and the arrangement is the the ends are going to be in opposite direction or the mouth is going to be in opposite direction say so this is worm a and we have drawn the segments say so we are talking about the spermatheci so spermatheical pores are in 5 6 these segments so here there are these openings which are of the spermatheci the other worm is going to align in such a manner that its anterior end is going to be on this side and its 18th segment should coincide with this spermatheci. So when it is here, this is worm B. So worm B is going to hold A worm with the help of the copulatory papillae which are present in the 17th and the 19th segment and from the 18th segment through its male genital pore the sperms would be deposited the male genital pores they are also in pair so this paired opening would lie on this paired opening and the sperms will be released into the spermatheci then the worms they keep moving so that the next would be in 8th then in 7th then in 6th segment. So now the sperms of worm B are deposited in the body of the worm A. So now worm A has its own eggs and the sperms which are produced by the other worm. So this is the copulation part. Now, after copulation, the two worms, they are going to separate. So, this is the worm A that we are talking about. And here, we will draw all these parts again. So, again, I am drawing 6th, 7th, 8th and ninth segment. Let us draw others also. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. On 14th, and 16th segment there is this clitellar band which is there and there is one opening that is female genital pore in the 14th segment. This worm has the sperms of worm B. Now earthworms are protandrous. That means the male, sorry, the male gametes mature first. So here in case of worm B, the male gametes were formed. They were deposited in the body of worm A. Now the egg is formed. So here the egg is ready. Eggs will be released from the female genital pore. There would be secretion of mucus also between the skin and the clitellum. So now we'll have to visualize it a little bit, assuming that this is a worm and this is a clitellar cover. Now there is a gap which is going to appear between the skin and the clitellum. So we see a gap here where mucus is released from the mucus glands and the 14th segment which has the female genital pore would release the eggs. 
Now, the eggs are here in this space which is between the clitellum and the skin. Now, the worm withdraws from this clitellum. It is going to move backwards. That means the worm is going to go like this. It is going to withdraw. So, when the worm goes back, what happens? The worm is right now on the 14th, uh, sorry, the clitellum is on the 14th second. Now, it moves like this and it comes over these segments. That is the 9th, then 8th, then 7th and 6th. When it comes over those segments where there are spermatical pores, the sperms are released. The sperms are of worm B. So, now... In this space, there are eggs of worm A and the sperms which are released from these spermatical pores of worm B. So now in this part, the worm is going to completely retract from this or withdraw from here. So what is seen is this clitellar part and in this clitellar region, there are eggs so these are the eggs of worm A and there are sperms which are of worm B. That means there is cross fertilization though the worm is hermaphrodite but the fusion of gametes is such that one gamete comes from one worm and the other gamete comes from the other worm. The structure is such that this clitellum would show its two openings closed up and it will form a cocoon like structure. Fertilization is going to take place inside this cocoon which is also known as Uthika. Here fertilization is going to take place and zygotes would be formed and now when the zygote develops this uthika is going to rupture releasing tiny earthworms so there would be many earthworms which would be released that means fertilization is external external fertilization. Fertilization is not taking place inside the body of the worm. The egg and the sperms are fusing outside the body and it is cross fertilization. So it is external fertilization and it is cross fertilization. Reason? The gametes are coming from two different worms or two different organisms though each worm is hermaphrodite and the fusion of these gametes is taking place inside that uthika or the cocoon like structure. Zygotes are formed and the worms are released. So when we talk about earthworms, reproduction, reproductive system very well developed. Though the organism is hermaphrodite, still it shows cross fertilization. Cross fertilization is always better. Because there is recombination of genetic material which is beneficial for evolution. So with this, we are done with all the systems of earthworm. Now in the next part, we will start with another aspect.